of cells people are thinking about for childhood disorders, and I'll speak specifically about cerebral palsy, but um, we're looking at it for other disorders as well, is first of all is umbilical cord blood. Now everybody has an umbilical cord, almost everybody throws them away. <laughs> um, and so this is tissue that has no ethical complications, no moral complications. Um, it's tissue that was just connected moments ago as a source of life between the mother and the infant. And it is rich in stem cells, all kinds of stem cells, a whole range of them. They're sort of part way between embryonic and adult. They're, they're on the way to, to a dedicated blood um, supply service, but they have special properties because they're in that unique phase of life. And so umbilical cord blood, because it's easy to get, has been a focus of big research. Uh, mesenchymal stem cells, as I said, which are the ones we de derive from um, marrow, etc. cetera. Um, also, it can, comes from umbilical cord blood, um, has been of huge interest. And then more recently, we've been looking at what is the possibility of neural stem cells? So neural stem cells are the kind of adult brain cells that we all have that actually make all the types of cells in our brain. They make the three types of cells that exist in the brain. And so, of course, if you have a brain injury and we're wanting to use adult stem cells, then we're wanting to really use neural stem cells, not blood stem cells, if we possibly can. So there have already been five clinical trials in cerebral palsy completed using stem cells. All of these studies um, have been conducted in Asia and there's one currently um, underway that's nearing completion in the United States as well. So I'll just talk you through what do these studies tell us about the possibility for this field. So the first study um, looked at something called olfactory and sheathing cells and is probably as gross as it sounds. All of you have stem cells in your nose and they're making them all the time. And so these stem cell um, uh, scientists decided to try these as a treatment for cerebral palsy. They've been certainly been tried and you can see media reports of them being used for spinal cord injury. Because they're in the nose, they're closely related to brain cells, neural cells, and um, they have some common properties to them. And so um, these were tried. Uh, these uh, Asian researchers also tried neural stem cells and neural progenitor cells, which are the cells just you know, the baby, the pre-step before neural stem cells. And um, two of the Korean groups um, also tried um, umbilical cord blood cells. And there's a very big umbilical cord blood cell trial also happening at Duke in the United States. So what do these cells tell us? So first of all, uh, don't get worried by this diagram, but imagine it's a big tree and this is the trunk of the tree. And if things fall on the green side of the tree, it means it favours stem cell. If they fall on the red side, it means it favours current rehabilitation. So it's not that rehabilitation is bad, why it's in red, it's just we're looking on this particular graph. If I statistically combine all these studies, what are they telling me about what should happen next? So first of all, you can see from these first two studies that the line Aver you know, the, here's this green square is the average, um, how all the patients responded. But some patients didn't respond at all, and some patients got a good response. So it's a variable, but on average, it's, you know, it's a mixed response. Same with this study. But as time marches on, and you can start to see that these studies clearly fall on the green side, showing that stem cells are giving a benefit to children and adults with cerebral palsy's movement skills, or gross motor skills. And so what this tells me is we're not there yet, but more research is certainly worthwhile. So what can we learn from these studies? Well, the first thing that we learned doing this analysis was that when we just pulled out the two studies using umbilical cord blood, you can see that that's the average of these first five studies, this diamond. If we just look at the two for stem cell, the average gets even better. So umbilical cord blood for the moment looks like uh, the best and the safest way forward for cerebral palsy and for other childhood disabilities that people are looking at and for other neurological disorders in adults. So um, there's certainly a favouring of going ahead with this. Um, and that's why we've put this research group together. So you can see maybe that you notice that the number of people in those studies was pretty small. Um, so the, some of them were 30. Um, the biggest one had a, just over 100 people in it. But if you want to try something pretty radical like stem cells, you want to know that it works for lots of different people. So we've put this group together called Accelerate, which is an Australian-American stem cell consortium that where researchers work together to accelerate the rate of research. So what we're trying to do for childhood disabilities is instead of the full 20 years it took to get bone marrow through 
through to an effective treatment that we shorten that gap by working together. So instead of doing lots of small studies and not sharing data, we, from the beginning, every study plan to share our data. We, sh we plan to have the same measurement points in these trials so we can quickly aggregate the data and, and answer families' questions more accurately. So if you look like this kind of patient, then we think you're likely to respond from the data. If you look like this, it seems you're less likely. So you can have more and more information, rather than just on average, some people seem to respond. Um, and it allows us then to be readily positioned all over the world that when we do find the right treatments, we can quickly roll them into clinical practice so people don't have to buy stem cells overseas. And so what a network th like this would allow us to do in Australia is if we show something's working and we're already working on this, we work directly with government that the right proven treatments are added to the pharmaceutical benefit scheme and to the Medicare so that they are free treatments for Australians.